We're given the function f of x equals four times the quantity x minus three raised to two-thirds power. We're asked to find the critical numbers, which is where the first derivative will be equal to zero or undefined. Then once they find the critical numbers, we want to determine the open intervals for which the function is increasing or decreasing. So let's begin by finding our derivative function. Notice here we have a composite function where the inner function is x minus three. So we can let this be equal to u, and now we can apply the extended power rule given here. So we can think of this as four u to the two-thirds, and therefore f prime of x would be equal to four times two-thirds u to the two-thirds minus one, where u is x minus three, and the exponent again is two-thirds minus one, and then times u prime, but since u is equal to x minus three, u prime would just be one. So let's go ahead and simplify this. Four times two-thirds would be eight-thirds, so we have eight-thirds times the quantity x minus three raised to the power of two-thirds minus one is negative one-third, And now to make the exponent positive, we can move x minus three to the denominator. And therefore the derivative function would be equal to eight divided by three times the quantity x minus three to the one-third power. Well notice how because the numerator is a constant, this will never equal zero, but it will be undefined when we have division by zero or when the denominator is equal to zero. Our denominator will be equal to zero when the quantity x minus three equals zero. So x equals three is our only critical number. And now we'll use this value to divide the domain of the given function into two intervals and then test the sign of the first derivative in each interval. Where if the first derivative is positive, the function is increasing. If the first derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. So again, because the domain is all real numbers and we're using three to form our intervals, the first open interval will be from negative infinity to positive three, and the second open interval will be from three to infinity. And now we'll test the sign of the first derivative in each of these intervals. So for this first interval, let's go ahead and select x equals zero to determine if the first derivative is positive or negative. We'll notice f prime of zero would be equal to eight divided by three times, this would be negative three to the one-third. We only care about the sign here. Notice here we'd have a positive divided by a negative. Therefore, the first derivative is less than zero or negative on this entire interval. Which means on the open interval from negative infinity to three, the function is decreasing. And now for the open interval from three to infinity, let's test x equals four. So for f prime of four, we would have eight divided by three times, if x is four, we'd have four minus three, that'd be one to the one-third power. Here we have a positive divided by a positive, which will be positive. So the derivative function is greater than zero or positive on this interval. And therefore the function is increasing on the open interval from three to infinity. Now this question doesn't ask, but notice how because the function changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals three, we would have a relative minimum at x equals three. To find that relative minimum value, we'd have to evaluate the function at x equals three. Let's go ahead and verify these results by looking at the graph of the given function. Notice on the left, on the open interval from negative infinity to three, the function is decreasing as x increases, the y values or function values decrease, or we can think of going downhill from left to right. And on the open interval from three to infinity, notice as x increases, y increases, so the function is increasing. Or again, we can think of going uphill from left to right, and therefore the function is increasing on this interval. And again, because the function changes from decreasing to increasing, at x equals three, we do have a relative minimum, or actually in this case, an absolute minimum at x equals three, which we can see from the graph would be zero. And let's go ahead and write that out. So 
that the relative, or in this case the absolute, minimum is the function value of zero at x equals three. Notice if we evaluate the function at x equals three, we would have four times zero giving us the function value of zero. I hope you found this helpful.